quick. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So we're looking at some no code tools here. The first one that we're looking at is Bubble. Uh, Bubble has been around for a minute. You know, they have like a million bubblers. They have all these the different marketplaces and showcases of like how to use Bubble. You know, what things you can do with Bubble, the functionality, you know, some of the some of the templates you can buy and stuff like that. So this is just one of those no code tools where you can really build an MVP product and put it out there. And Bubbles, I think, is for like uh, web applications and websites. And uh, what's pretty cool is that they have this whole like drag and drop component. All these no code tools have this drag and drop component where it's like a Figma, like a like a like Adobe XD, whatever, where you can like literally like take things and just drag them in. So like you see this, see this item right here. This dude is literally dragging in a map a map um, a map function, which is like you would take forever to code that. Right. So uh, these no code tools are really good in just trying to get ideas out and get MVPs out. And um, the pricing on uh, Bubble is let me see what the pricing is. So for this one, they have so many different pricings. So they have a free one. They have a personal one, which is like twenty five a month. They have a professional one, which is one fifteen. They have a production one, which is like four seventy five. Most of you are going to start either the free or personal one, which is perfectly fine. And you, can, and you get access to, to certain things. Um, with Bubble, you, I think the most, the most thing you get access to is more um, database storage, like the file storage is half a gig, 10, 20 to 50, up to 50 gigs of storage, and um, which is pretty cool. And the thing is with like designing is that um, with our designs as UX people, the only thing that doesn't make our um, products real is the back end part. That's the only thing that doesn't make our products real. So we got to figure out how to make those things actually real. And um, so that's the, that's the only thing with that. And um, another thing I want to look at is the time. Hold on one second. Okay, I'm back. Awesome. Had to check the time real quick. I don't want to go over. Um, so yeah, Bubble is an interesting one. Another one that is more focused on actual applications, like as far as like... Um, iOS and Android is Adalo. Adalo is pretty dope. Okay, Adalo is like the only thing that Adalo is kind of lacking is um, the visual parts of it. You can't really like change a lot of things in it. It's more of those like it's definitely a wissy wig, and it's one of those things like when you grab an item, it it's gonna function how it functions, right? So Adalo is pretty cool for those people who want to actually build an actual app that you want to put into the App Store. I um, mean, the Google store and then the um, Apple store, right? As you can see here, they're like putting all these different elements. You can change, you can add images. And what makes it real is the back end component. It's the database that you need to be built. And that's the only thing that does, and that's the only thing that's keeping us from having a real application is the database. Can you imagine if Figma applied a database component to their particular, like their app builder, their um, the design tool? Figma would kill the whole market. Figma would literally kill the whole market. If Figma could figure out a way to make the backend component real, and you can like literally publish an app that you've designed straight into the app stores, dude, Figma would kill this whole no-code market because I don't know how many people are using Figma, but there are so many different no-code tools out there that you can barely even choose from, but everybody likes Figma, right? So Figma. If you need to figure this out, hire me. I'll be I'll be a consultant on it. I don't want to work for you, but I'll be a consultant on it. But anyway, a dollar can it just shows you like all these different types of apps you can build. You know, lifestyle performance app, like coaching apps and different things like that. These are all all things you can build in um, a dollar, which is pretty dope because you can even add a component where you can accept payments through it. You can accept either in mobile payments or like a Stripe credit card payment system. So that way you can make money off of your app. Because at the end of the day, like, if you're just building an app and you're not making any money for it, why are you building this app? Just saying, bro. Make a business out of it. Make some make some coinage. As you can see, like, Apple Store, Google Play Store. And it's all pushed to the both stool. Uh, to, <laughs> can't talk. It's all pushed to both of them, which is so freaking dope. As you can see, a dollar is pretty lit. They, they got all these different... Um, so, case they, so they got all these different features you can do. And also they have like app. That also they mentioned is that um, 
They have different apps you can um, download to make your product even more um, valuable. So components, actions, and database. Um, the database one is the hardest one to figure out because um, <clears throat> as designers, we, we think about components and actions and how to build it. But like the database functionality is something that you have to switch your brain a little bit to figure out, okay, how does this connect to the database and how do we serve up dynamic content to our users? But yeah, drag and drop components, 25 beautiful design components. These are things that you can literally just drop in right now and get them working. You can even, you can even pick up, you can connect Zapier to it, link pages, push notifications, longer permissions, all these different, even native device action. That's pretty dope. So you can even access people's cameras and in, in their photos. That's pretty dope. And um, yeah, the only thing I only thing I see that's confusing to me sometimes when I come to this is like the set the relationships. Um, trying to figure that part out. If you can figure that part out, man, you'd be you'd be you'd be set. But yeah, that's a dollar, man. And uh, how much does a dollar cost? A dollar costs, um, there's a free tier, there's a $50 tier, and there's a $200 tier uh, per month. So 50 bucks a month and $200 a month. So um, if you haven't checked out Adalo yet, check out Adalo. Go to Adalo.com. It's A-D-A-L-O, Adalo.com. And the first one is Bubble.io. Um, that's the website link for Bubble. And then, um, yeah, so even with this, like I said before, they have templates you can use too. So the cool thing is, is that you, let's say you have an idea, you want an appointment app, you can just use that template and it'll do it for you. Coaching, ordering, Facebook clone, like all these are like different templates that are already pre-built. So you can kind of start from somewhere versus starting in like a blank page. So you can like literally, okay, I want to make an appointment app for blah, 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 for my, for my dad's workshop. Literally make an appointment app for your dad's business. Boom. Now your dad can take appointments and he doesn't have to use like, I don't know, Acuity or whatever the one that um, Squarespace bought. So that's that one. I'm going to switch these because I'm going to show my favorite one last. The sec the third one is AppGyver. AppGyver is one of those ones where you can build apps. And AppGyver is pretty lit. AppGyver is pretty dope. Why? Because AppGyver is free until you hit $10 million in revenue. The Yeah, look at this. For all indie developers and organizations with less than $10 million USD in revenue or funding. Basically meaning this thing is free until you hit $10 million. How many of you guys are going to hit $10 million in your first year? How many of you guys are going to hit $10 million in your second or third year? Not very many. So like you're able to like keep this tool, iterate on it, make it special, make it special, make it good, make it good. And then boom, you hit $10 million. If you hit 10 million, look. You can make $5 million in revenue and, you, and this app is still going to be free for you. That is insane. Like this is this is offers so much more value than a dollar one, which is pretty cool because I feel like AppGabber has a lot to offer too. It has a lot of stuff. Look at all these things. Look at all these components they got. I mean, these just the ones you just drag and drop. You can actually customize these. I like AppGyver. Um, the only thing they don't have is a component for like Stripe integration. So you have to like kind of connect an API to get... Um, Pay me for your app. And also the way they their flow stuff, it's pretty nice how to connect and how to do interactions. Um, kind of similar to what Bubble kind of does, what they do their what they do what Bubble does with their workflows. Um so something similar with um with uh, app gallery is the if then. It's almost thinking about like um I wanna say like Java or React, how you just say like if this then this, if this then this, and when this, when this. So that's pretty dope. Um, bring in your own data. Looks here it says you can bring in Google Maps. And I think you can connect um, certain backends to this as well. And um, yeah, they have a community here. They also have uh, videos. Look, this is actual DHL. DHL uses AppGyver. Think about that, an actual real company. And it's pushed to both app stores. So similar to Adalo, it's pushed to both app stores. They also have, you know, documentation. Uh, you can go through in here and you can kind of like go through their academy and learn from them. They have lots of videos on YouTube and also on Vimeo. Is it Vin Vimeo? Yo, Vimeo and Venmo, y'all need to stop. First of all, y'all logos look the same. Second of all, y'all names sound the same. Okay? People are getting confused. I don't know if I need to make, make take a payment. I don't even know if I need to go watch a video. Guys, change your name and do something. Call it like Venmo pay or Vimeo, bruh, it's the same. It's the, I, I'm honestly think it's the same company. Is that a conspiracy theory? It's the same company. I promise you. I'm pretty sure it is. Anyways, 
um, yeah, they have a community there. They have blogs and stuff like that. Your careers, you want to go work for them, whatever. But yeah, you can basically build. I think you can build um, all these things. All right, so let's go check out my favorite tool, the one that I particularly like the most. So the one that I like is called Flutterflow. Flutterflow is similar to Adalo, AppGyver, but it looks way better. Like, look at this, man. It looks freaking dope. Like, the interface is like this cool, like, dark pattern. And like, look at the tools. Look on the sides here to the, to the, to the left. Doesn't that look familiar? What does it look like? It looks like, you know, Adobe XD, Figma, Photoshop. It looks like all that. You can go in there and see all the layers that's attached to it. So that's kind of dope. And, um, What's really cool is that you're able to like make this look how you want it to look. You're able to like fine tune it to make it look how you want it, like how you design it. Some of these other tools, like you kind of limit it to how you can make things like like a dollar. But like I think you can I think you can fine tune bubble a little bit more. But um, this one really takes it to the next level, which is pretty dope. And also what's cool is, is that it's it's flutter. It's it's flutter code. It's like the dark code. And what you could do with this is. You can build this app and then you can like download the code and you can like expand on it in Flutter. Let's say you want to take this app to the next level and you want to like, you know, build like a dev team and all those other different things. You can take the code and you can just go into Flutter, hire you a couple of developers and like, look, this is where it started. This was the MVP. Let's do something more with it that we cannot do with Flutterflow. Maybe eventually Flutterflow can get to a point where you don't even necessarily need to download the code and go elsewhere. But for now, this is so dope another thing is is um firebase firebase integration is freaking dope because i'm not sure if the other tools have this firebase integration um but the really was really cool is because with the firebase integration let's say i'm done with flutterflow i don't want to i don't want to use it anymore i can still have the i can still have my backend i can still have my database to go and attach to something else so i don't lose that with the other tools if you like leave that particular software, you leave that program, let's say you don't want the subscription anymore, you lose all that data. I don't know if you can download that data or get that data from somewhere else. I'm not really sure, but I know that with Firebase, it's a separate service that's connected. I think it's like connected API or whatever. That is so freaking dope. I'm not really sure what these other two are, but um, I'm pretty sure they are I'm pretty sure they're pretty good. But let's just scroll down. Look, 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 look. Build this uh, visually. No shit. We're designers. That's how we build. We build things visually. We do. We're a design tool. So this is going to be very familiar to a lot of people. Uh, similar to like if you ever made anything in Webflow either. Look at this. This looks like uh, how I connect things in in Adobe XD or Figma. I'm putting together my actions, connecting those screens. So I've done that before, and uh, connecting the Firebase backend. <clears throat> so that's something that's um, that's going to be new and different to designers is incorporating the dynamic content in the actual application so that way you can have a real type of app going forward because the only thing that's holding us back is like we design all these cool screens and all these different things but we can't make them real because we need to hire somebody we can't make them real because we don't have the resources or the time or the money to do it but now you can now with this back-end uh virus integration Flutterflow, you can now make your uh, your designs and your things a true reality because think about this. We're the UX designers. We do all this research, collect all this data, do all this other shit, but we're losing because we're not able to actually make this stuff real. Can you imagine the projects that we make, the projects that we come up with, all the data and research that we gather behind it to show that it's true, that's truly valuable? Can you imagine if we were able to take that and make it a real app? That'd be so freaking cool. So, so let's take a look down a little bit more. So as we go through it, look, look, preview and export code. I already talked about that. And look, this is just the beginning, guys. This is just the beginning. <laughs> look, you can also learn Flutterflow as well. You can look at all these YouTube channels, look at all the information here that they have here that can really help you um, go through this. Man, no code tools is where it's at. Uh, let's just look at the pricing real quick. So the pricing is pretty decent. Um, you look at the pricing, uh, free plan is zero bucks, standard plans is 30, and the pro plan is 70. Compared to like Adalo and Bubble, I think Adalo was like 
They have a free plan, but they also have their middle plan, which is like 50 bucks, and their other plan was like 200, right? Let's take a look. Yes, exactly. And then Bubble was what? Bubble was all over the place. They had free, they had a personal 25, professional 115, a production one at 475. So I'm not saying, and also an app gallery was like, um, it's free up to $10 million. So if you, <laughs> can you imagine like you built this whole app, you built this whole dynasty, but and then, and then, and because you haven't made $10 million yet, you're not being charged for this tool, but you're making millions of dollars from it. That is insane. So shouts out to AppGyver for that particular model. I'm not sure how they're going to make money off of it, but I'm pretty sure there's a couple of companies that use AppGyver that probably hit over $10 million. But for those who don't have $10 million in revenue, and for those who want to like do something cool, a little more dynamic design, maybe Flutterflow is it. Or maybe AppGyver is it. I don't know, but I particularly like Flutterflow. And for 30 bucks a month, I'm fine with that. Oh, but I need the APIs. I might need 70 a month. So I might do this one. Just depends. There's some other tools out there. But yeah, they also have um, a blog where you can go in and see like the production launch and like new templates. And what's cool about these templates that they have, as soon as you download one, I think it actually puts together like the um, the stuff that you need for your Firebase. It's put together like, oh, you need this for this authentication, this particular user, this particular user, because it's going through like flow. And once you connect your Firebase, it uploads those, I think. Don't quote me on that. Might need to check it out for yourself. But um, yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really digging this, man. I'm really digging um, the whole no code tool, the no no code space. It's pretty dope, man. There's a, there's a, there's a lot more tools out there that I that haven't gone over yet. I'm still exploring them. But um, as I think about where I want to go in my career, in my future, like is this something that I can leverage to make something for myself, so I can eventually get to that goal of being my own boss, doing my own thing, going where and what I want to go. I don't have to ask for vacation time off, right? I can just freaking take it. So um, what do you guys think? What do you guys think of the whole no code thing? Let me get back to myself. <laughs>